All right, so Andrew Vargas Delman here today. Um, you have a pretty unique business proposition thing that you do, which is personal consulting. I mean, most young people in the Bay Area are probably dreaming of a tech startup or they're going in the wine business. Uh, why coaching and consulting? Yeah, well, so some of the possibilities or some of the values that drive this work, there are three words that I use, which are confidence, connection, and communication. So I found that my job as a coach is to stand for those values in my clients because I found like their elements that we are just missing so much in life is self-confidence, so just being comfortable, being who you are, connection, actually being, right, actually being able to connect with people around you and not feel isolated. And then communication is to actually be honest about what's going on for you and not feel like you need to pretend and hide. So I found that coaching was just a great opportunity to be able to embody those values and do this kind of work in a fun, creative, exciting way. Uh, and I guess I was a little entrepreneurial and adventurous and willing to dive into it. And I don't regret it. Yeah, let's see. I, I think typical goals would be, one is being able to communicate with people in our lives. So a lot of people will feel isolated, let's say at work, or it could be in their relationships at home and feeling like they need to perform or pretend certain ways of being, or, you know, they need to put on a facade of being strong or need to, you know, make their own needs secondary to other people's. So one really important goal for a lot of my clients is being authentic and genuine about being who they are, right? And, and just being able to have that be present in the relationships, the authenticity. Um, another goal is working in their professional life. A lot of people feel stifled, right? Either they're at a job where they're not super excited about the role that they're playing or the people around them are, you know, they don't have the best relationships. So whether I'm working with a business or an individual in their work relationships, a lot of the focus is on how do we make this workplace like much more of an exciting environment to walk into and, and actually be a place that you're living as opposed to somewhere that you just clock in, clock out, and then you go live once you're done working. Um, and so I, we've definitely had great success, you know, repairing, helping people build their relationships at work, like with coworkers and with managers. Um, so that'd be a common goal. Yeah, a lot of it is in, in concrete form. So a lot of it will be, you know, I made a client, I brought a new client on this week, or I increased my income by this amount, or we'll have, you know, difficult conversations that someone was planning that they actually, you know, arranged with, let's say a family member or a coworker and actually had this conversation. And then they'll give me feedback about like, this went well, and I was scared and this worked and I didn't, you know, this wasn't perfect, but there'll be sort of actual measurable objectives and mm -hmm. results. Um, one of my favorite things is when I get pictures from clients about something that's working for them. So I had a client recently, yesterday, he sent me a picture of these worksheets basically that he's doing with his family, which are to improve communication and sort of emotional expression in his family. So I just took a picture of the different worksheets and you can kind of see like the plants on his table and everything. And that way I know like he's actually out there making a change in his life and his family's life. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the time, the what someone will bring to you is an issue like, um, you know, things just aren't working in my relationship or we're always fighting, we're always kind of, it's, there's always tension. Or in the workplace, like my boss doesn't listen to me, or I don't have the responsibilities that I want, or like this company just doesn't work. And so I think a lot of the time there's, you know, a specific issue that it's like most important for them to solve. But then as we start building these tools of confidence and connection communication, you start to realize like, oh, I can apply these in my personal life as well, in my professional life, to my health, 
to my personal growth. Yeah, it's happened to me a couple times, and and mostly when you get a sense that someone is not actually committed to the work that they're doing, it it no longer is a working coaching relationship, professional relationship for them to just be showing up, walking in the door, and then we have a plan, and we have an idea, and the ability to actually change life, and then nothing happens. Mm. So most of the time, if someone is not quite ready to commit to the work, they won't, they won't get started anyway, so it's kind of self-selecting in that way. Mm. But you know, if after a month or two, um, if they're not willing to take on the the challenge and like the discomfort to some extent of making life be different and of acting in new like creative ways and changing their habits then yeah coach coaching doesn't work coaching works if you follow the plan and if you're willing to take on the work but it totally doesn't if you are not interesting yeah well, I was trying to express you know it'll work if you work so I think it applies to a lot of things including coaching coaching works if you work you know? if you work <laughs> coaching works yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This one's fun because this is all the work, this is the whole work coaching. Uh -huh. Is the first one I'll say is stories. Is people have a narrative. We have a narrative in our heads of how things work. So I have a narrative of how my girlfriend is, or how my boss is, or what my health is, and I people will get very fixated on this is the way things are, and that's just that, and that's a narrative, and we find a way to sort of situate ourselves in that narrative. So the biggest hang up is getting people to realize that you can rewrite, you can restructure your your narrative or your understanding. So a big one would be don't have time. That's right, that's a narrative we have running all day long is I don't have time. And really time management, I like to think of time management as priority management. So there's a finite number of time amount of time for everyone, same 24 hours. It's a matter of what you do with that. And so someone who doesn't have enough time is generally not being intentional enough about their priorities and not willing to have the uncomfortable conversations to allocate their time in a better way. For instance, maybe I'm doing a bunch of work in my job that I, don't, that I really am not enjoying and don't wanna take on, but if I'm too uncomfortable to have an honest conversation with my boss or with my team, then I'll say, oh, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy. There's a hang up. Mm -hmm. um, another one would be not enough money for X, Y, or Z. A lot of money concerns are totally legitimate. People have a certain amount of income. And at the same time, there are usually opportunities. There are always opportunities to create more money if you need it. There are people in your life you can ask. There are ways to, you can sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace, you can limit your expenses, you can you know, hold off on Starbucks or whatever, going to the movies, like there are ways to create more money, but a lot of the times people will say, you know, I can't do X, Y, or Z because I don't have money. Really, it's I'm not committed to doing what I need to do to create that money. Yeah. So another really big hang up, uh, roadblock, right, or obstacle is getting distracted. So not being intentional about these are my goals and this is what I really want to create in life and just kind of like going with the flow and going with the distraction. So, so, you know, so let's say in a coaching session, we'll like go through all these ideas and get really, really present to like, this is what I want to create in my life and we'll set out a plan and then life happens over the course of the next two weeks, right? And like, you know, arguments may happen at home or like I have to, my car breaks down or I gotta go to the dentist, life happens. And a lot of the coaching work is like refocusing on this is actually what matters to me. And like, what matters to me is not, you know, doing my bookkeeping. Or what matters to me isn't just like putting out fires in this relationship. I wanna be on stage or I wanna run my own company or, you know, I want, um, to make enough money to travel. That's what really matters. And so coaching is like, you gotta bring it back again to what matters and avoid the distraction and the scatter. 
Yeah. I, th I would like to think that my biggest impact on people, again, is connection, confidence, communication, right? So helping people feel those things and specifically helping people share and get reconnected to people in their lives. So like I'm saying with this client who shared about um, working with this family. So if we keep that momentum going and we can keep him and his family learning to express themselves emotionally and create a space of acceptance, we can now make an actual transformative effect on how that family operates and then how they communicate with people external to them. So what, I, what most excites me about this work is helping people see that, in a word, sharing, that people don't want fake, people don't want you know the illusion of success, people don't want excuses for why you didn't do whatever it was. People want authenticity, they want realness, they want real human connection and vulnerability. And I think my biggest impact on clients I work with and ideally you know, friends and people I interact with is creating a space where people can be vulnerable and actually be themselves instead of pretending. Yeah, first thing I would say, I mean, first thing is be clear about your goals, right? Do you actually want to take on working for yourself? You will need to learn about business systems, like you will be, you know, in QuickBooks, you'll be doing marketing, like it's more than just the practice. Like coaching is more is way more than just the session itself. You have to actually run a business. You have to treat it like a business. So that'd be one thing is do you actually want to be a business owner? Second, get a coach, <laughs> to be honest. Get a coach, a mentor. It doesn't need to be someone specifically like coach title. Find someone who's in a position that you're in and use their expertise and their knowledge and their willingness to mentor you. Because there's so many hurdles that you'll be dealing with where like it's really discouraging to go out and you, you know, you want to put on an event or you have a new project idea and you go and tell 20 people and no one responds and you're just totally deflated. Having someone there to be like, yeah, that's the process and get help you get back on the horse is super important to avoid burnout and feeling isolated. Right. Well, I'm working one-on-one -on -one with every Fortune 100 company. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I doing? I am could be. working, could be, every single one. <laughs> yeah, I'm busy, <laughs> yeah, busy. There's three of me. Yeah. Um, I'm working with businesses. I like working with small and medium businesses. Um, we are building company culture. So really the vision is how do you make the business, which is a place that you have to be to provide for your family and you spend so much of your time there, how do you make that a place where you're actually excited to show up? You're not clocking in, clocking out, you're not dreading it. You are confident, you can build relationships with people there. You're, there's clear communication going on, you're having you're being enabled to work on jobs and at a skill level that actually matters to you. So I think, you know, we can't restructure the economy. You know, we have corporations are such a fundamental piece of how we use our time. And it's going to be a lot harder to change that than help people really just transform and reimagine the work experience. Mm -hmm. and, and having people share. I will share what's going on. It's huge. It's so huge. The ability to feel confident enough that you can explain like, Hey, I'm just, I really, I'm just feeling burnt out today. Or like, I'm sorry. I'm just like, I can't, I can't take this on. I have too much going on at home and being able to be open and be accepting of that. Yeah. That's worth everything. That's great. Listen, Andrew Argus Delma. Thank you so much for being part of Entrepreneur Interviews and uh, thanks for your time today. Thanks, Chris.